Today on Learn Linux TV, we are going to take another look at the Pinebook Pro. I was a little bit critical of this laptop during my review, but the main complaint I had was that the default distribution that it ships with wasn't really a great user experience. So in today's video, I'm going to review Manjaro running on the Pinebook Pro to see if that is a better alternative than what it comes with. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to switch the screen over to the HDMI capture directly from the laptop and we'll check out Manjaro. So here it is. This is the XFCE edition of Manjaro ARM. It's got a neat little logo down here with ARM over the Manjaro M symbol. And what you're seeing right here is the login screen, which looks good enough for me. I'll go ahead and log in. It might help if I actually type the correct password. And here we go. We are logged into Manjaro for the Pinebook Pro. Now, as you can see, I've been having a little bit of fun here. I created six workspaces. I was just messing around. And that being said, you're going to notice some differences here from what this is like out of the box because I have been playing around like I mentioned, so I changed a few things here and there. But for the most part, what you are seeing here, minus the crazy number of workspaces, is essentially what you'll get when you go ahead and install this on your Pinebook Pro. As for default applications, we have the usual suspects, for example, Firefox. Now, as for the time it took to launch Firefox, I did not edit that part of this video. I wanted you to see what the actual performance is like. It's not terrible, but it's certainly not going to be as fast as an SSD would be. But then again, with the Pinebook Pro, I don't think anyone is expecting it to compare to high-end laptop or desktop specs. This is an ARM platform, which is great and efficient, but not the same. So we can't make a direct comparison. But you know, this is Firefox, nothing substantial here. I'm sure you've seen Firefox before, and it is a welcome inclusion as the default browser. And of course we have the file manager right here, and this is the Thunar file manager, the default for XFCE, and it's a decent file manager. And since you can see the default icon theme right here, it's probably a good point in the video to talk about the default theme, the look and the feel. I think that the ARM version of Manjaro is actually very well put together. The theme is great, and it's not just because green is my favorite color. It actually is a decent theme. They have put a lot of effort into this, and it shows. It looks pretty good. Now, some other applications that we have here by default. We'll go ahead and bring up the application menu so you can see what that looks like. We actually have quite a few here. So... From top to bottom, we have your usual accessories, nothing too exciting. A text editor, for example, an archive manager, a calculator, you get the idea. Education, we have LibreOffice Math, which, does anyone actually use that? Well, anyway, it's part of the LibreOffice suite, which is why we have that. And so is LibreOffice Draw as well, Viewnier for viewing image files. I already mentioned Firefox. I don't see a default email client here, but then again, it is 2020, and while I still use Thunderbird, how many of you guys actually use a desktop email client nowadays? Let me know, I'm just curious. Am I old fashioned, or am I not alone on this one? But the fact that Thunderbird isn't here is not a big deal. We can go ahead and install applications very easily, which I'll get to shortly. Now, continuing on, Audacious for basically listening to mp3 files. We have mpv for also viewing mp3 files. It's primarily for videos. That, that seems to be what most people use it for, but it plays music as well. So I'll open a few of these right here.
And we can see the two applications right here that I just opened. I don't have any media to play right now, and I don't want a takedown from YouTube or anything like that, so let's go ahead and close these out. Continuing on, I just talked about a few of the multimedia applications for Office. I already mentioned LibreOffice, which is my favorite Office suite. That's pretty cool. Then we have our settings right here to customize different parts of the desktop. And then we have some system tools here. And some of these applications were installed by me, some of them by the developers of this distribution. So there's going to be a little bit of a difference if you were to run this on yours. But for the most part, it's pretty much the same. So it's a pretty decent list of default applications. In my opinion, I would have preferred that there be a checkbox or something at the very beginning where you can have all of these default applications or a more vanilla clean installation with few applications. But that's not a big deal because we can simply remove any applications that we don't use. Now speaking of checkbox, I wasn't able to get any screen capture of it, but when you first boot into Manjaro Arm, it actually does ask you to customize your installation. It has you create your username, set your password, and various other things, the same as you would do in any other Linux distribution. Now why that's significant here is because the default Debian desktop that the Pinebook ships with doesn't actually give you those options when you first go into it. Now while that's not a big deal, it basically means that already Manjaro is giving you guys a better user experience right from the beginning boot. And speaking of user experience, we have other utilities and tools here that you would expect in your typical Linux distribution. So for example, we have the update notifier icon right here. And this is pretty user friendly here. We can basically choose what we want to do. Everything is defaulted to upgrade because we have several updates available. And click on this, for example, to remove the checkbox if I don't want to upgrade that particular item. And of course, I could scroll through the various updates here and then click apply. I'll go ahead and take care of that. Put in my password here. And you know, that's simple, it works just fine. I'll go ahead and let this finish and I will be right back. Now the updates are installed and actually I was pleasantly surprised to see that some of those packages are specific to the Pinebook Pro. The developers of this distribution have gone all out. And while that might seem kind of elementary, not very exciting, the Pinebook Pro does require a little bit more, just basically some changes and customizations to make it work because it's not your typical platform. It's not the x86 platform. And Manjaro, basically, they're helping make that happen. They are adding customizations to their repository and to this distribution to allow things like your kernel and the overall system to function normally. And when it comes to package management, you just saw what the package upgrade process looks like. If we search for add remove, or we just actually have to type a few letters, we have add remove software right here. And this is basically how we get software installed on our Pinebook Pro. And just look at the list here. We have, for example, GIMP, and I'll go ahead and install that. It's a decent example. I'll click Apply. It's even giving me a list of optional dependencies. That's pretty cool. So if I needed any of these features here, I could just check the boxes accordingly. Now, it might help if I actually type the password properly. Gives me this summary, so I'll just click Apply. And GIMP should be in our menu now, so sure enough, there it is. And I'm not going to edit this part right here either, so we'll just see how long it takes for GIMP to load up on this machine.
and you know, that was decent. And as you can see, it's actually pretty easy to install new applications here. And I can't believe I didn't mention this. This is a rolling release, which I think actually fits the Pinebook very well. As long as you keep your system up to date, you always have the latest packages that are available. Manjaro may not move quite as fast as Arch, but it is a rolling release, and I think that's pretty cool. Now we also have the Manjaro Settings Manager. And this is very similar to other versions of Manjaro. You might be missing some of the options here because this is a different platform than x86, but we do have additional options here. And I'm curious what happens when I click on kernel. And there's nothing available here, but if they ever make an alternate version of the Pinebook kernel available, then they'll probably put it here. So overall, I really like the Manjaro distribution for the Pinebook. In fact, I'll go as far as to say that it actually makes the Pinebook Pro usable. Now I know some of you out there might not have a problem with the default Debian distribution that the Pinebook Pro ships with, but in my opinion, it just doesn't have that great of a user experience. If you are an advanced user, and I think probably the majority of you guys that are considering this, you probably are an advanced user, you might not actually care, but I think that there's something to say about having a great user experience regardless of what kind of user you actually are. And so far between Debian, the version of Debian that it ships with originally, and Manjaro, I have to say that Manjaro is hands down the distribution to use on the Pinebook Pro. I like it a lot better than the Debian distribution that it comes with. The attention to detail is great. It has, like I mentioned, an awesome user experience. There's a great theme. It's easy to use. It's a rolling release. And the speed is reasonable. I really like it. So let me know what you guys think of Manjaro, the Pinebook Pro, or anything else for that matter down in the comments below. And I'm going to go ahead and get back to editing some videos because I have some awesome content coming up. So make sure you subscribe and I will see you again real soon.